Hi everybody, welcome to my channel for the third and last practice game. Before the big tournament, you will f obviously see soon a full tournament report with five battle reports and also some analysis video that some of you like really much. So I was facing John, a good friend of mine, playing Dread Elves and yeah, it was interesting because we discussed his list um, on the flight when we came back from ETC this summer. We discussed about the possible concept of a Dread Elf that would be MSU, very shooty, but still not too bad in close combat. And he tried to, to build that. So he came up with the following version of the list. You have obviously quite a lot of shooting with triple repertory, triple auxiliaries. Other than that, you have a couple of raiding party in core to, to fill the core. Uh, one chaff unit, a double tender pack and a raptor chariot to provide some uh, yeah CC threat that can charge quite far, do some impact hits. Unit of obscene guard to act as second BSB. And in the character setup, he has a master evocation and then two fighting character. A lord on horse and a BSB on horse as well with one up rollable that can go within the unit of Warlock Acolyte. So yeah, a kind of uh, Death Star cavalry, not really Death, Death Star type, but more like a um, good place to hide the character, not too expensive and they can go out at any point uh, if they need to. We played on Captain Flag on Diagonal, Rufus Flank. Here you have my spell selection and my opponent spell selection. Um, yeah, nothing particular to say here. I wanted to have Swarm of Insect and uh, Totemic Summon to threaten the Boltor, for example. All is shooting more or less than chilling from the Frosty was going to be useful in this game. And I thought, yeah, Break the Spirit might be helpful as well to maybe stop his fighting character at some point. Um, yeah. Generally speaking, I think I have no good way to deal with this character in close combat. Maybe the Bruiser, but even for them, it's not so easy to deal with uh, this high armored character. So this is going to be painful to, to deal with them. Uh, obviously, my best shot, I think, would be to shoot them, basically, to kill a couple of guys in the unit. There are only eight of them. And then, with no lookout, sir, I could try to snipe out the character. Uh, if I can't achieve that, then I have to rely on Chaff. My range damage has to take care of both the CC, some CC threat because if he combo charge me, I'm in trouble, in particular in the mercenaries unit. But also I have to take care of the shooting because if I don't care of the shooting with my shooting, then it's going to shoot me easily and then I won't be strong enough in close combat. So here, this type of combination is for me very problematic because I have uh, two characters that I cannot deal with that I need obviously to target with some range damage but at the same time there are a lot of aux auxiliary shot and bolter shot that can really kill easily my mercenaries so yeah it's going to be an issue in this game. Captain Flag, um, yeah, I figured I might have a chance here. I might have an open to to get one flag. He has some small score units, so if I'm a bit lucky with some shot, maybe I can finish off uh, one or the other flag. MSU, he's playing an MSU with a lot of mobile elements, meaning I will have to be quite compact and use cover to not suffer too much from his shooting. Estimation was for me a negative matchup. I put 7 here, but yeah, it's an indication that I didn't feel too good about uh, this matchup. But always interesting to try out this type of game in training because uh, then you can see if it's indeed not a good matchup, uh, what you could, have, you could have done better. So it's definitely interesting to try to train this type of matchup. John won the roll for side and uh, cut it the following way. He took top right, I got bottom uh, left. And the starting of the deployment phase was quite interesting because we traded a couple of drops. Basically, I told him you can start to drop. Wanted to see if he was going to drop the first turn. I was Basically, if you see my deployment zone, I had a way to deploy quite compact on the south of the impassable or the opposite to do the same, but on the north part of the impassable. Um, I delayed that, so I let him drop a couple of things. I put, I think, in the first couple of drops like Yetis, then my scoring that can easily go north or south in the first couple of turns, and then both Cratapult. 
uh, an important factor that I forgot to mention in the matchup analysis is the fact that I outrange him. Basically, my mercenaries can move 6, shoot 24, his bolt thrower can move 5, shoot 24. And the same goes for auxiliaries that can move 10, shoot 18, so it's 28. So I, I consider the fact that if he starts, I could basically give him no shot turn 1 and then maybe uh, adapt my deployment. But yeah, since we played a drop game and at some point I saw him placing the Acolyte uh, partially in the hill. Obviously, I will have some some cover if I shoot at them. But um, yeah, I figured out that might be a good shot basically because if I can target them turn one with shooting, take advantage from uh, forest to be hidden, um, I might just kill enough of them to shot them, I was able to place my cannon at short range, so I drop everything basically. I put mercenaries with BSB, uh, like I said, the cannon within 24 to get the short range to the unit, because if he drops the look lookout I want to be able to shoot that character within short range. Uh, Frosty was also in range, then yet is on the right, uh, bruiser block with the mage, squatapult, squatapult, um, tribesman bruiser and my giant on top. Um, then um, his deployment, his counter deployment. So he he did the following: he spread out over the board. We have auxiliaries here, auxiliaries here in the middle, auxiliaries, some ripped battery overall, uh, obsidian guard here, a BSB general within the acolyte, thunder, thunder, the chariot here, south. He made sure that I cannot escape any line of sight and have good spot with the yetis on turn one. And here have the mage bunker in the back and corsairs here on on top left. So yeah, uh, I think that was uh, kind of expected that he would do that in the deployment phase. I had a couple of alternatives. I think here I went for kind of not not the safest approach, but I wanted to try it out if I'm able to snipe out the character because if I can do that, then it's a completely different match because then he's not so strong anymore in close combat, meaning I have better chances. What I could have done instead is obviously deploy strong to the top maybe even let the bruiser close the gap here below to avoid him being too aggressive with the cavalry towards my my zone and here drop like the merc and some stuff to protect them and basically have a compact line by using the the ruin to protect the mercenaries that could have been as well a possible deployment but yeah i figured out let's try this might be a good plan might be a bad plan we'll see after the game my turn one i didn't move much since i was in good position and i wanted to avoid um, getting penalties on stuff like, uh, for example, the Frosty. I just move back my Yetis within uh, Forest to gain some cover. And then on top I move back the Giant to be out of range, basically. Kinita was in ambush, obviously. And I move back my flag behind my battle line to protect them. Uh, I got a Totemic Summon off. I put it here on top. I think that wasn't the best place to put it because basically everything is out of the game and now I'm putting a target in the middle of it. So it's easy for him to just focus on that. I could have instead like placed him here on top on yeah on the bottom of the table to um, like block his advance and, and be annoying. So I think that wasn't the best spot at all for the Totemic Summon. And I rolled 4 dice, triple 6 and took 1 wound on my Shaman which is not a big problem. With shooting I didn't achieve my plan, I only killed 1 cavalry. His turn 1. So he moves slightly forward, uh, mostly with the unit on the right, he moves strongly forward and then the rest move um, a bit forward. He turns around, all his shooting to deal with my uh, Totemic Summon. That did zero rune to the Bolt Thrower with the Breast Weapon, which was disappointing, but also um, somehow expected that I wouldn't kill it in one go. Then his Magic Face. He got minus one uh, leadership and toughness on my Bruiser Block, try to, yeah, kill some of them before anything else happens so yeah and then with the shot he did two wounds to the yetis one or two to the bruiser one to the mercenaries but not much since i had a couple of covers some of the stuff was either out of range or had to move to take some penalty and ob obviously he killed the totemic summon that i placed here my turn two uh Kita doesn't come off the board i stay pretty much compact i will try something similar 
Um, yeah, I figured out shooting at them in in soft cover is very annoying, so I will try to take some other target and to target his flag to try to to kill some of them and reduce a little bit his uh, shooting abilities. I move the mage back and uh, just position my bruise block to block any uh, maneuver try from the uh, thunder pack. And yeah, I forgot to mention this Kratapult, I think it misfire and cannot shoot for the rest of the game, which is a bit annoying in this matchup because they are quite good Kratapult. In my magic phase, I got, um, I guess, another Totemic Summon. This time I place it much better. I got also plus one toughness, I guess, on the Bruiser block this time. And that was it. With shooting, I kill six Obsidian Guard with this one, so I didn't misfire, actually. Uh, kill six of them, or maybe that was with the second Scratapult, might be. I think this one misfire and this one, yeah, shoot at them and kill six. Uh, I kill like seven of the auxiliaries with mercenaries shots. And also I did one wound to the chariot with my um, Frosty. And uh, nothing else than that. His turn two. Yeah, I continue to move a little bit forward. Turn around the two flags that are in danger. They turn around and move away. Same goes for them. Um, he moves on the hill this time with them, so I will have another go at trying to shoot them down and maybe get some cannon shot at them. And the rest didn't move much, as you can see, Boltrower moves slightly forward and he turns around with Boltrower and Archer to shoot at my uh, Totemic Summon. Magic phase, he tried Touch of Reaper to um, kill my Yetis, but I, he failed that, then he tried Twisted Effigy on the Mercenaries block. I dispel that and he failed hereditary, so a bad magic phase. With shooting he was able to kill the totemic summon and also the yetis. So bad news because I really wanted the yeti to chaff next turn to be able to do some stuff, but uh, yeah, to lose them ex uh, right now is, is a bit annoying for me. My turn 3. So yeah, I expect him to try some long charges because he can reroll and he has some stuff that can also combo charge, so I take the BSB out. A turn around the bruiser and stuff to be ready to counter charge. Uh, didn't move the cannon, just pivot. And I will try this time again to shoot at them. He has no cover. So it's 5 up with all these shots. 4 up for the BSB, 2 shots from the Frosty and also then the cannon shot. So I'm really hoping to take enough down to try to snipe some character with my uh, cannon. I think between the BSB and general maybe it's better to try the BSB because he has no ward save and then if he fails it uh, all these uh, break test, panic check and stuff will be non-rollable, which might cause him a lot of trouble, I think. Uh, yeah, other than that, I move back my giant. I just wanted to be sure because I turn around my bruiser to look at this part of the board. Uh, there was a spot where I couldn't protect, I, that I couldn't really zone. And I wanted to have um, yeah, some other combat pieces that could avoid the, the, the Thunder Pack to move to my flank, basically. In my magic phase, I put plus one toughness and plus one to hit on the mercenaries, expecting some charges. Um, and then with shooting, I kill three of them, so no, no lookouts anymore, try to cannon shot, I misfire, roll a one, so cannon is broken and now I'm in trouble, basically. Uh, other than that, I kill some of, I think, what did I kill, what else did I kill? Couple of auxiliaries in the middle with maybe a... Uh, a catapult shot, something like that, but yeah, was a bit disappointed. He's turn 3, so now I'm, as, as I said, I'm in trouble because I cannot uh, snipe him anymore. So he moved to my flank with both characters, chaff my um, combat threat, and move Thunder Pack on the hill, chariot to the flank. The rest, they move, yeah, obviously slightly forward, but not too much. He doesn't want to get charged by my giant or scratapult, basically. Um, continue to move back, auxiliaries and obsidian guard to avoid me, move forward with the Corsairs, try to shoot at my Scratapult. And the same goes for Boltor. In his magic phase, um, he got minus one toughness leadership on the mercenaries, I think. And then with five dice against five dice, he put no shoot against my mercenaries. I thought that might be a small risk because if he misfire, if he miscast in a way that kills all these guys, I could have some nice charges. But yeah, he didn't miscast, and I just didn't manage to to dispel that. So yeah, uh, as you can see at the end of turn three, 
bottom three complicated situation for me. I spotted a way to escape from this trap on the right is by charging mercenaries here. I saw that the, the flight pass away from the character would lead me in a safe zone. And since we play Captain Flag, I thought that I might have a plan now. So I charged with both. Obviously, my Kinita didn't come off the board to chaff them, which would have been really nice, but didn't happen. Um, and then I thought, if you try to attack here, maybe my best defense is to attack somewhere else to also focus his attention and force him to feed me chaff. So I used the giant to yeah, minimize the contact against Thunder Park. If he charged me, he can go well, he can go bad. If he goes bad, I have two chariots ready to counter charge him. I push forward the bruise block to put some pressure on the flags and bolt roar and stuff. And then um, just put back my character in a safe zone. Um, like I said here, I double charge to be ready to double flee. And here I move forward with Cratapult to threaten also the Thunder Pack. The idea was really to yeah put some pressure on him, force him to, to make choices. I could have done maybe slightly better, slightly more aggressive, but yeah, the chariot couldn't move that much. So I think from this position, maybe I could have been one, two inch more forward and angled the giant slightly different to optimize a little bit my options. But uh, yeah, I think that's a detail. In my magic phase, uh, it dispelled Totemic Summon that I wanted to chaff the character. And then I just got chilling uh, with two dice to basically give minus one to shoot on all these units in the middle that can shoot at my um, aggressive unit, my attacking unit, so to say. Close combat, I deal with Arcolite, no problem, uh, slightly pivot, and uh, that was it. Eastern 4 charged me with character, I flee with my mercenaries and I knew by taking that flee that I would have to pass 1, 2, 3, 4, 9 rollable and I failed 1 with the flag, so I failed tribesmen, they fled off the board and we play capture the flag, so annoying but I knew that was the risk in my plan. And then I flee again with the frosty jumping over everybody and ended up here. So the mercenaries are within BSB in general range. Uh, the frosty isn't anymore. So yeah, a bit annoying. But yeah, I knew that could happen and it just failed charge with them. Um, and we know at this point of time that we are going only to play 5 turn, unfortunately. Then he plays light calf to chaff my two units. Continue to move away with auxiliaries, just turn them around, move away. Same goes for um, Sin Guard. Use the Corsair to chaff me to be able to gain a good spot with the Thunder Pack to maybe counter charge me. Uh, these guys push forward, same goes for the Chariot. His magic phase, I use Binding Scroll on minus one toughness and leadership. I figured out if he cast that on them, for example, could be very problematic. Uh, if I take, have to take panic because I will be far away from my character, most likely to avoid the charge from them. Um, yeah, shooting I didn't do much, I guess. Oh no, it's excuse me, it's his turn. <laughs> uh, shooting he did a couple of wounds to the giant, I guess, and nothing more than that. My turn five. Rally mercenaries failed the eight, no reroll on the frosty, continues to flee, charge with Cratapult against Corsairs. And here I had a good opportunity basically to charge with Giant, force a terror check, eight, no reroll. He passed that unfortunately. If he wouldn't, then I would have uh, possible charges against uh, Boltrod, scoring unit, plenty of stuff that I can try to charge. Same goes for the Giant. So I would have really good opportunities, but yeah, fortunately for me, he passed the check. So I double charge and my latest attempt to get a flag is basically a 10 Swift Stride overrun against Auxiliaries with my Bruiser Block. If I get that, I get the flag, it's 1-1, one, one, it's tie on secondary. So maybe I can get that, we'll see. Um, yeah, then here in combat, uh, magic face, I tried Tamic summon, but it failed, I guess, and I didn't get much. Close combat, I killed the, cor the Corsairs with my Scratapult, that just, yeah, didn't do much, maybe overrun, out of line of sight, don't remember. And here I try and I roll a 9, so I didn't get these guys, here as well I tried to overrun, it was like 10 or 11 against Boltor, but I failed that as well. And then in his last turn, he will just focus the shooting on my giant, kill it, and I will fail the eight. 
leadership, no reroll, panic check on the bruiser that are just going to flee and give half point, which is annoying, but at least he failed the charge of both characters on a 10 swift stride against the cannon. Which was the best I could do basically because I was threatened by them on top as well and them as well. So that's the best I achieved. So that's what, how we ended up. So I only took uh, Warlock, Raiding, Riders. Um, he took from me half of Bruiser that didn't rally, half of the Frost that didn't rally, and uh, full Tribesmen that fled off the board due to leadership check. So quite a lot of point, points due to leadership check, but that can happen. Kill the Yetis from shooting, kill the Giant from shooting, and uh, he took flags because of the Tribesmen that f uh, fled off the board and the fact that I wasn't able to uh, get any flag from his list. So yeah, 6 to 14. Post game analysis. Yeah, I felt his list compared to, compared to my list caused me uh, the combination between his uh, combat capabilities, meaning mostly characters and impacted from Thunder Pack in combination with his um, amount of shooting just made it a difficult matchup for me, I guess. Um, I tried to deploy to try to snipe General BSB, didn't work. I think, yeah, that was a plan that has had low success chances. So I could have maybe deployed like mercenaries in the ring with a couple of stuff and then maybe on the right of the impossible, the bruiser block to stop just to put maybe between the acolyte and my mercenaries, which are his prime target, maybe put the bruiser in between just to tell him if you want to go there. My bruiser maybe can charge you, which will force him to chaff, feed me chaff to the bruiser unit and make maybe harder for him to reach my juicy points, which are mercenaries. So I could have maybe had a better plan and deployment overall. Uh, after the cannon broke, basically character were able to go solo and I was in big trouble. I knew that with my creative flee plan, I think that was the, the right choice to flee the charge. I was in big trouble here. I really stuck in the corner and um, yeah, too many charges available for him. I knew I had this couple of nine rollable checks to take, uh, lost one flag on that. So I cannot really complain because I knew that uh, that was the downside of my plan. I had a late opportunity to get some flags and maybe tie the game. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't work out since um, he passed there and I failed the overrun. But uh, yeah, I had this opportunity. Slightly lack of focus on the flag. I think my plan wasn't too good here. I should have popped the first Totemic Beast on the bottom right corner, target auxiliaries, and then with the second one plus the shooting, I would have killed one flag. So here I think I have some regrets. Regarding the list, maybe a side aspect. Um, yeah, lack of anti-chaff uh, range damage. I think overall... That's something that I have been in trouble with multiple times with Ogre Khan is when you don't have light shooting like Bombardiers or maybe Pyro or because it's it's hard sometimes to use mercenary shots to shoot at Chaff since it might be far away, uh, it might be not the best optimal target if you really need those mercenaries poison shot to deal with most important stuff. So sometimes I have a bit of a problem and uh, he, yeah, uh, I struggle to really take care with the chaff. So I think that's a, just a point to keep in mind for uh, a later building of, of an army list. And yeah, I think John uh, played played good. The, the, way, the way he did with the flag when he suffered too many casualties, just turn around, move away. Flee to safety, so to say, without really fleeing, but just making sure I cannot do any more damage to him. So he did that well. And uh, yeah, after it, it was just too late. A bit frustrated that the Kinita didn't come on the, on the board until turn 5. So at least I didn't give the points. But yeah, I would have liked to put a bit pressure with the Kinita. But I think that can happen when you field only one Kinita. You know that it can happen that it doesn't, come, it doesn't show off at all. So that's, that's part of the, the ambush rule. Thanks a lot guys for watching this last practice game. Uh, talk to you soon on the channel on another battle report. Bye bye.